Welcome to a new episode of Next Stop Everywhere. Um, so Charles, if this would be a bonus episode, so are we going to call this official episode 2.5? Yeah, I think we should do 2.5, just if nothing else, because we're keeping the theme going. Yes. Because because we're not quite to three yet, because the third episode is um, coming up, you know, like the episode airs Saturday with... Um, the uh, robot of Sherwood, and then we'll be doing episode three, our episode three, the following day, hopefully. Yes, I hope everyone got a chance to listen to Charles and Karen talk about Into the Dalek. Um, it was a treat for me to listen to the episode and hear them talk about it. Um, got to tell you, I'm a little insecure, Charles. Karen's <laughs> pretty good. So yeah, she uh, is. <laughs> I'm just saying, she, I I, she, I feel she, replaceable. She, no, no, no. If anybody's replaceable, it's me because I'm the newbie at this. So. Okay. Yeah. This. Uh, I mean, that was only that was only my fourth podcast ever. Yeah. Um, we, the reason I missed is I was at Dragon Con, and for those of you who don't know, Dragon Con is a massive, um, convention, science fiction, fantasy comic book entertainment um, that's held in Atlanta, Georgia every Labor Day weekend. The story I heard this year is that they reached 70,000 people. Wow. Um, and it, unlike um, Dragon Con's a little different than a lot of conventions, um, it is over five or six host hotels all in downtown Atlanta. So there isn't like one convention center. Um, so, and they do a lot of different tracks. So there is a Star Wars track. There is a Star Trek track. There is a British media track. There is um, a Whedon track, a podcasting track. And so, and I, you can go and look at all of them. And so like the Whedon track is in the Weston Hotel. And so almost all their events are held in that one hotel, unless it's um, a, you know, like one of their, like their Firefly panel is usually not in that hotel. It's in one of the other hotels, the biggest room they can find. Um, this year, um, the British media track was in the Sheraton. They had Colin Baker. Um, nice. It was very nice. Um, and, um, it was well attended and a lot of fun. I was at, lucky enough to be asked to host a couple of fan run panels. Um, and I'm probably telling stuff that, uh, our listeners already know, but just in case, um, there are two kinds of panels in a convention. There's usually a, um, a celebrity panel where someone interviews the celebrity like a Colin Baker or, um, you know, a Ron Glass um, and a William Shatner, you know, Patrick Stewart. And then there's fan run panels, which are basically three or four pan fans sitting at a table with an audience and you discuss a topic and interact with the audience. So I was on a fan panel for Haven, oh. uh, the Falling Skies, excellent, Defiance, ooh, one of my favorites. Yes, Arrow, even better. Yes, and um, I think that was it. I may have, um, I That's may have not forgotten. Enough. <laughs> yes, it was good. Um, the Arrow panel was um, especially fun. Uh, we talked about. Um, a lot of cool things happening and um, how all of us are excited to see what they're going to do this season with Thea and John Berriman kind of being her mentor. Uh, what's Ollie going to do? You know, is Felicity 
you know, all that romance, and then how much are they going to interact with Flash, which um, I, I guess Flash is 1A in your list of heroes, because if Doctor Who's uh, 1, wouldn't Flash well, be 1A? Well, first off, it's the Flash. The yes. definite article, you might say. Okay. But, um, yeah, the uh, I, I don't really group um, the Doctor with like anything with comic books. I mean, I, yes, he's been appeared in comics, but, um, you know, I kind of treat him more of like a, a sci-fi hero. Okay. Than more than a comic book hero or a superhero. Okay. Because he doesn't, I mean, yes, he's an alien and he has some certain abilities, but I don't really see him in that, that, that kind of comparison. Okay. And maybe that's just me. I'm I'm sure a lot of people do, and that's cool. And maybe if you wanted to compare, like, you know, the Flash TV show and Doctor Who, because they're both science fiction television, right. that, uh, that that would be more of a fair comparison, I think. But the Flash is one of your favorite characters. Uh, the Flash is my all-time favorite character. Okay. And yeah. so um, it, there was some nice discussion. Uh, some of the fans were old enough to remember the um, – original uh wesley uh ship and uh they we talked about that for its time uh you know they just didn't have the money but uh they did pretty well some pretty good stories and um and a couple of people talked about they had just recently rewatched it and they thought it held up uh pretty well so for the most for the most part it does yeah i would i would tend to agree with that because um yeah it was it was from 1990 to 91 so you have to make allowances and there was it was has so heavily influenced by the tim burton batman movie yes that uh you know there's a, it, that kind of feel to it um especially with um john wesley ship's costume yes that that um so you have to kind of take that in account but and Overall, I think it still holds up, and I was, as a fan, I was obviously very crushed that it only received the one season on CBS. Yeah, and um, the Gulf War was its biggest competitor. We talked about that. And mm -hmm. uh, one last thing before we um, re we get back to Doctor Who, as we're t you know on our Doctor yeah, Who podcast. Yeah, we're on the Doctor Who podcast. You're talking about the yes. Flash. Okay. But um, one of the things someone. One of the fans said they were worried that Arrow was bringing too much too quickly, and I disagreed. And I said, no, I love the fact that the writers trust themselves, that they'll figure out, you know, next year, next year. If we have a good idea, put it in there. Let's go through. Let's go through the story because you never know you're going to get another season. Right. So I, I applaud that. Yeah, halfway halfway through that first season, yeah, they they kind of came into their own, and they're like they started embracing the DC Comics universe, yes, and started started just throwing everything out there, which was I think why that that show found its voice so quickly. I agree. Um, so that was a lot of fun, and um, but one of the coolest things was um, they had, you know, a lot of people in the British media Facebook. Uh, page for Dragon Con was well, we're gonna have to miss the episode that's coming on Saturday night. Um, you know, and the Dragon Con said, Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, you know, we can't get the rights. And then, so fans started talking about, Well, maybe we can find which hotel has BBC America, and maybe we can, or maybe a bar could have it, we can do a viewing party. And so they announced um, only like a week and a half before Dragon Con that they had made a, uh, an arrangements with BBC America and Comcast to show the episode at Dragon Con. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so it was. So they had two big screens. Um, we I lined up starting at 530 and uh, the guy running the line was pretty funny. He's like, go ahead and sit. You're going to be there for a while. Uh, Wendy Hembrook, who Hembrook, who is the Tuning Into Sci-Fi TV co-host, um, and also does the Game of Thrones podcast with me, uh, was there. And um, Lou Sista, who is Old Darth on Twitter, 
um, who does the Scapecast podcast with me and does a Stephen King podcast, um, joined us. So the three of us sat there and visited and talked. And as it got closer to seven, which was when they were going to let us in the room, uh, people started coming up and saying, okay, this is per BBC America. Everyone, you have to turn off your phones. Not in silent mode. Turn off your phones. Before you get in the room, we are going to make you show us that your phone's turned off. So we're kind of looking at each other like, well, that's weird. Um, and sure enough, when, you know, about 7, 7.05, uh, we started marching in the line. And the room can hold 1,800 people. Ooh. And there was not a seat available. It was Excellent. packed. Um, Excellent. And they did. They showed us. And the uh, uh, the representative from BBC America said, you know, the reason we've asked you to close your phone is you're the first people in North America to see the episode. Because this is about 7.20 East Coast time. And it doesn't come on till 9 o'clock East, right? Charles right. on Saturday? Yeah, it actually comes at 9 o'clock Eastern right. on BBC America. So it's about an hour and a half before. Um, uh, one very funny moment was uh, one of the guys who works for Dragon Con was kind of up on stage and doing a kind of warm-up. Like, come on in. Don't, you know, don't skip a seat. It's going to be a full house. You know, just keep coming in. The quicker we get in, the quicker we can see the episode. Um, and Everybody get comfortable with each other. Yeah, it, it, he was just really funny. He, he, he talked about his love for Rose. He said, I'm an openly gay man, but I'm telling you, that Rose <laughs> Tyler does something for me. And we were laughing, and, and he said, okay, I want you guys to do, I'm going to count to three, and I want you to name your favorite doctor. Oh, dear. And so he does one, two, three, and there's just this roar. And he just said, I knew it. I love it. He said, I couldn't understand a word, which means no one, there's no one group here. There's people that love four and five and 10 and 12. And he said it was just amazing. Um, so it wasn't just the David Tennant fans outnumbering the Matt no. Smith fans or something. Yeah, yeah that's good. Saw a lot of Colin Baker cosplay. Um, Excellent. Yeah. So when they started the episode, um, it was good. I really liked the episode. I won't go over it too much uh, because you and Karen did a really good job of discussing it. But well, I was you. I was really happy um, with the introduction of uh, the new character Pink, right? Danny Danny Danny, Danny Pink. Pink. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought he was really funny when he kind of said out loud what he should have said, like stupid, stupid yep. sod. Uh, and it was kind of touching the tear and the setup with the, the doctor and soldiers. Um, I happened to have lunch with uh, Ken Schaefer, by the way, he says, thank you for reading his letter uh, oh, yesterday. And cool. he talked about there's, there's actually, that's not out of it from his from his his opinion is that's not out of the blue that the doctor has always had a little bit of trouble with military even when he was working with unit it was right because he yeah. had to yeah so, there was that kind of friction of him almost being the liberal against like the conservative military yeah that kind of ideological clash Mm -hmm. Without getting too political, but right, yeah, yeah. and so uh, he he was uh, really happy with that. Um, what I thought was interesting is Lou, um, old Darth on Twitter, um, is not a Doctor Who fan, <laughs> and he just went to the screening because so he's dead to us. Yeah, yeah. So he wanted <laughs> to just hang with Wendy and I, and um, he. After the episode and we're walking out, he said, that is hilarious that um, the, one of the main reasons I don't like Doctor Who is so prevalent in this episode. And he used the example of the um, when the soldier shoots the um, off the arrow or the I, I get what do you call when they he shoots to kind of do the. So they can climb up the pylon or whatever. Oh, like you mean like a grappling hook or yeah, something? Yeah, the grappling or? hook. Thank you. 
and that it hurt, you know, the Daleks. And, you know, the doctor throws him that pill. And then when he dies, he said he was already dead. I'm just trying to save the rest of us. Lou's point is the doctor seems very callous with life on his perspective. And that he doesn't understand why Who fans forgive him so quickly when we would hold somebody else to a different standard. See, I would take issue with that because I don't think he's always that way. Yeah. And this new doctor may be. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's, I mean, I, I have a hard time, especially with like someone like, like Peter Davison's fifth doctor, who was, you know, just constantly, um, concerned about life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, saying just writing off all the doctors as being cows. I think yeah. that's I think that's a very harsh overgeneralization. Well, on part. you will you will, you will love this. Um, I have already talked to Lou, and he's going to uh, after the season is over. One of our shows, um, he wants to come on and talk about it to us oh, about good. why he because you know he is a huge. Um, sci-fi Come on, fan. Let's bring it. No. <laughs> and you know, um, and and you know, loves Star Trek and loves Farscape. And like I said, he does a Stephen King um, podcast. So a huge genre. Um, in fact, very happy he uh, Jim Butcher was there from the Dresden Files. Yeah, yeah I love that series. Yeah, well, he, you know, he was there. He's read all the books, and he got to we. He attended a panel that had the writer and then Paul Blackstone, I think Black, the Blackthorn. I, Blackthorn, yes. Yeah, he, uh, he's also on Arrow. As, yes, uh, he is. Yes, he yeah. was on one of the Arrow panels. So anyway, I told Lou that that would be a lot of fun for us to discuss. That we would be loving, but would discuss and try to not necessarily change his mind, but give him a chance to, you know, kind of view his uh, thoughts and what to see. I think that would be interesting. Well, I look forward to his apology. Yes. <laughs> um, so that was uh, just truly amazing seeing in that many people um, laughing at the jokes, enjoying the suspense. I thought now, was Colin, was Colin Baker there by any chance? Uh, no, I thought that would have been awesome if he. That would have been fantastic. Been. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, in fact, you know when they. When they introduced their special guest, which was the representative from BBC America, small part of me had hoped it would be Colin, you know, mm -hmm. waving. You know, the crowd would have gone crazy. Oh, yeah. And for him yeah. to watch The Who, watch the yeah. episode, you know, with one of the doctors. Um, and he's such a strong supporter of the show ever since he, he left the role. Yes. That he's, a, he's a great ambassador for the show. He is a great ambassador. And, you know, he talks about... Um, not only when, as I thumb my nose at Charles, when I interviewed him at uh, Lusa, but in uh, other interviews, um, the you know, the bile is building, building inside he, me. Like he does a column in a local paper there in, um, his hometown. And he talks about how much the doctor meant to him and how he thinks of it with great affection. He hopes that fans think of him with great yeah. affection and to remember good old sixy as he called it. So yeah. yeah. The big the big finish audios have done such a great job at redeeming his doctor, in my yes. opinion. There I mean he's so good on those and it's it's really fleshed his doctor out and made him much more likable and interesting and heroic and yeah. Overall I I I hardly recommend checking those out if you guys haven't because uh Colin has done a stellar job mm -hmm. with those, in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, so anything you wanted to ask me about the episode before we move on? I've got a couple of emails to read. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, what was your, your actual overall rating for the show? Um, I would. We did give, ours. Yes, we did. Um, I was not ready for this. Uh, <laughs> I am going to do... Busted. A, Eight Dalek antibodies. Okay, you took my took my. Scale. Did you do that? Okay. Yeah, uh, that was mine. Eight and exactly eight Dalek. Yes, antibodies. I will have to come up with another one. Maybe I can do. Uh, so we agree on the on the yeah, scoring. Yeah, eight 
eight uh, cold cups of coffee <laughs> because you know those <laughs> coffee by that time it's really cold. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, I was I was very happy with it. Oh, good. Um, so uh, good. Here is um, uh, Jimmy Aquino, who is the host of Comic News Insider. By the way, in a recent episode, gave us a shout out. He uh, at the end of their episodes, um, he um, and his co-host do top three. They give three things they're recommending, and we were one of them. Um, so, and he just said um, he thought that the um. He said, I will give you some love on the podcast on our record. Listen to the first episode and curious of your thoughts of the first uh, to check out the first thoughts of the Doctor Who episode. Um, I say I loved it. Um, he said there's um, I, I agree with you about Tenet being my doctor and interested to hear you talk about how you discovered the show. I probably talked about how I did. I remember seeing a few episodes as a kid. And not being interested. And then when the new series in 05 happened, I wanted to check it out and was hooked. And when Tenet took over, I was on board. I have been lucky enough to do press rooms with him, Davies, Moffat, Smith, Gillian, Coleman, Behrman, and others over the years. Exciting to hear you got to interview a couple of doctors too. Good job on the podcast. Hope it does well. We'll try to keep checking on it. Thank you, Jimmy. So well, thank thanks, you, Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Jimmy. And um, the other thing I wanted to share is um, a guy named Eddie I work with um, sent me to an IM, and he said it was okay for me to read it, um, you know, through our work IM. And he said, Jesse, I listened to your inaugural Doctor Who podcast. I think I've told you before, after listening to another podcast you guest hosted on, you have a great internet radio voice. Thank you, You do. Eddie. Yeah, much better than mine. Very easy to listen <laughs> to, and I will say this. I've never had any desire to watch Doctor Who, but after listening to you guys talk about it and how the Doctor regenerates when the actor gets replaced, I'm actually intrigued about the series now. Excellent. It, can you get a better compliment than that? You will become like us. Yes. So um, thank you so much. Um, Charles, we kind of got a nice little thing happen to us this past week, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, are you talking about our, our ranking? Yes. Yes. Yeah. For those who don't know, um, uh, iTunes has comes out with their little uh, rankings about um, – I'm not sure how it's what it's based on, if it's based on downloads or – I'm guessing probably downloads or, but, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, um, uh, TV and film in that, in that grouping, um, they ranked us. We, we saw that, I mean, it could have, we're not quite sure ex exactly what, how high we charted, but we noticed at one point we charted at number 31 on the TV and film chart for podcasts, which is just amazing. And thank you guys so much for supporting our show because, you know, we're, we're trying to do the best we can. And, you know, and uh, we love that you guys love the positivity that we do regarding the show and the humor and that you're digging it. And hopefully you keep on digging it. And we'll just, I, we just think that's so great. Yeah. I, I've always wanted to have a top 40 hit. And, you know, <laughs> we're on the top 40 of iTunes. Uh, so Too bad Casey Kasem's no longer with us. Yes, it, indeed. It, it was amazing. And um, so please, if you're listening to us, take a few minutes, go to iTunes, uh, rate us. Um, five stars are the best. We love that. But if there's a, a reason why you want to give us less than that, not that we're in two different earphones. Please yep. give us some. We're working on yep. that technology. Yeah, uh, yeah. We know we're not perfect, but we're yeah. we're trying. Yes, we're and uh, if you want to spend a few more minutes and write a review, that is absolutely just wonderful. Um, we that is how new people find us and listeners. And so, um, thank you guys so much. Uh, we were going to keep this one short since it was a bonus one. 
Uh, is there anything else we need to cover, Charles? Um, just want to give everybody a heads up that uh, 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 Saturday is, like I said, the new episode of Doctor Who, um, Robot of Sherwood by Mark Gatiss. So that's your homework. And uh, so please check in on BBC America or iTunes or wherever you, you watch the show and then come on back. And then hopefully we're going to record our take on the episode on Sunday. Right. So, so now uh, this we have our episode three. We have now um, NFL conflicts. So <laughs> we're going to have to figure out uh, when we can do between our watching our various. We'll yes, but we'll figure it out. Um, we are on Twitter. At Next Stop SMG, um, we have Next Stop Everywhere SMG at gmail.com. I am Jesse Jackson. I can be found at JWJ170104. And there is, we have a Facebook page, not Next Stop Everywhere. Just do a search and you will come up. Charles, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Charles Skaggs. Um, and then also, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus for the two of you that actually use Google Plus. Um, and then also on my blog, which is full of all kinds of geeky news, uh, Damn Good Coffee and Hot, which covers a lot of things like Doctor Who and Next Stop Everywhere and all kinds of other stuff. So, yeah, please come check us out. And with that, uh, we will close. All I want to say is keep hope alive. And remember, you want weapons? We're in a library. Books. The best weapons in the world. <laughs> nice quote. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye. 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 If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or... Well, as much as you want. <laughs> Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world. <laughs>